So when you first start AutoCAD, you're going to have a few things here. So right here, you're going to see you have a recent projects folder. I don't have any right now because I just installed the program. Over on the left, we also have Autodesk projects. Again, I don't have this installed. We have a learning page where you can go and get tips and tricks from Autodesk. And you can have a few things called My Insights, which just kind of shows you featured recommendations in the program. If you come up here, you're going to see we have an open tab. In here, you can open up your own um, drawings here that you have saved. And over here, we have new. You can browse templates or just create a new drawing. In this drawing, we're just going to click Browse Templates. And we're going to go to the basic ACAD.DWT folder. You're going to notice here that there is different types of drawing styles, different types of folders and templates you can open. Again, today we're just going to deal with ACAD.DWT. Once this is open, you will notice that you have a ribbon here that contains all the tools you'll need to use AutoCAD properly. You're going to see we have visualization tools over here. This allows us to orbit and create 3D objects most of the time. When you're drawing in 2D, you don't tend to use that too often, but uh, it comes in handy when you're using three-dimensional objects. Down here, you're going to notice we have the command bar. The command bar is going to be your best friend when you're using AutoCAD because it allows you to type in commands and get things done instead of having to manually search for it on the ribbons. And then up here, you're going to notice if you want to switch between your drawing and the start menu and you click start, you'll be brought right back down to the main section that we talked about in the previous section of the video. From here, you can open or create new drawings within AutoCAD uh, and you can also switch back to your other drawing right here. You'll notice you also have a plus button and you can create and open new drawings based on the previous template that you were using. Once you've gotten yourself accustomed to the layout of AutoCAD 2025, the next thing we're going to do is learn how to do 2D drawing. So when you're doing 2D drawing, you just come to the Home tab and we have a variety of tools up here. So you're going to see we have lines, polylines, circles. Within circles, there are many different ways that you can create circles. We're just going to stick with the basic one where you select a uh, radius. You can create arcs, rectangles, and ellipses. So I'm going to show you how to draw with a line. So when you grab a, click the line tool, you just click where you want to draw a line. Speci you can type in the distance or specify the distance with your cursor. In this case, I'm going to specify the distance with my cursor. Let's say I want it around 7.5. So as you can see, you can also, it, it's not too accurate if you don't type it. So right now we're just going to type in 7.5 on our, um, on our keyboards because it's automatically set, as you can see, to that distance that I have. You can also specify an angle if you press tab, if you want it to be at, let's say, a 30 degree angle. Press enter and it's now at a 30 degree angle. One thing to note is when you are doing angles, that AutoCAD will take into account what you have as a preset for that. So it's always preset to uh, start on the bottom right, I believe, and that's what I have here. So what you can see here is when I click enter, my line is then created. Um, I can also just draw down and I can click down and then I can click on to the left and I have a perfect triangle. When I come here to polylines, one thing you'll notice is polylines and lines act very similar when you're drawing them right now in this version of AutoCAD. And you'll see that as I draw my polyline that uh, I'm just going to draw a rectangle and you can see that it's all just one flush object when I select it. If I go to my lines, I have to manually select each and every line in order to select it. So that's the main difference between lines and polylines. Polylines allow you to draw a drawing and just select that entire uh, sequence of lines at the same time, while, while just lines don't allow you to do that. If you come up here to circle, you'll be able to select a circle. If you come here and you click where you want your circle, you're going to be able to specify a radius. There is a command to specify a diameter. If you come up here to the circle, you can specify a center and diameter instead of a center and radius. You can also select two points, three points, tan tan radius, and tan tan tan. We're just going to select center and radius. So I'm going to go back to what I was doing. I'm going to click the center. I'm going to come out, and we're going to come down to 2.5, just for ease of use. And you can see we have our circle. Um, we can also come here and we can do arcs. There's multiple different types of arcs. There's three-point arcs. There's center end. You can play around with these and figure them out yourself. In this one, we're just going to do a three-point arc. So I'm going to specify the start point of my arc. I'm going to specify the second point of my arc. And then I'm going to be able to bend my arc to what I need it to be. So if I come here, I can just make it cap that out. You're going to see on the bottom here that it's not what I want it to be. So I'm just going to click it. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to pull it back to where I want it. And my arc is exactly how I want it. And then up here, you're going to see we have a shape command. So you can create rectangles and polygons. So if I click on the rectangle command, I'm going to be able to come up here. And instead of drawing a rectangle like I did with the polyline tool, I'm just going to click in the corner that I want. 
I'm going to click in the second corner that I want, and I'm going to have my rectangle. Now, it does stand to reason that you'll be able to do the same thing as you did with polylines. You can specify the length and the width of your rectangle. So again, when you're doing this, type in what you want. So we'll do 7.5. You're going to see that it's highlighted where I'm typing. And once I'm done with that one, I press tab. Do not press enter. Press tab. And I'm going to type in 3. Once I've pressed 3, then I will press enter. And then my rectangle will go to the size that I specified through my keyboard. If you come up here again, you'll see there's a little drop down menu. There's a polygon tool. Once you get that, you can select the number of sides you want. So I'm going to do a six sided polygon. I'm going to specify the center of my polygon. It is going to be inscribed in a circle. And you're going to see that I have my six sided polygon. And I can specify the radius of the circle that I'm going to use for this polygon. Because that's how AutoCAD creates polygons is through circles kind of. So you're going to press that and then you'll have your polygon created. Over here, you're going to notice we have the eclipse or the ellipse command. We can specify a center, axis, and elliptical arc. We'll just do center. We'll come over here. We'll just click it down. We're going to specify that size of it. And then when you once you've specified the distance or the radius of it, you'll be able to stretch it to what you need it to be. I'm going to stretch it to here. And that's how you draw basic shapes in AutoCAD 2025. There's a variety of other commands down here. I encourage you to go and try them out. But we're going to right now move on to the next part of this video. So AutoCAD has a variety of tools that can help make your drawing life way easier. So down here you're going to see we have a variety of tools. So over here you're going to see grid mode. So grid mode allows you to see the grid or not. So if I click that, then my grid will shut off and it'll make the drawing nice and clean for when you need to, you know, look at things a little in a more realistic light. We're going to turn it back on for now. You're going to see we also have snap mode. So this allow this makes it so your cursor when you're drawing snaps to your grid. So you're going to see that I can't go in the center of that um, square. I can only go to the corners of it and it snaps to grid. This is very useful when you're making precise drawings that have to be, you know, up to scale and precise. Uh, so we're just going to turn that off for now. Over here, we've got ortho, ortho, ortho mode. So what this does is when you're drawing, it restricts your cursor to the X and the Y axis. This is good for making nice, clean 90 degree angles. And then we've also got a variety of other tools over here. So we can click here and we can select our snap points. So if you haven't already, um, then come here and select the snap points I have. These are the snap points that I use personally all the time. I don't tend to use um, some of the other ones because they don't really affect my work. Um, but if you have to do that and it would affect your work, then go and play with what you want. But I'm just going to leave this up for a minute. Uh, please feel free to pause the video and take note what I've had and then select what you need to use as well. The next thing we're going to go over quickly is the command bar. So the command bar allows you to speed up the drafting process. One tool that I would like to tell you about that I don't see anyone talking about is the DIN mode command. So I want you to come down to your, co your command bar, type in DYN mode, and you're going to see a pop-up show up. I want you to press enter, and you're going to have a variety of selections you can make. Once you have this, if your value is not 3, I want you to type in 3 and then press enter. When you have 3 set, you can start just typing on your keyboard without having to select the command bar. This is something a lot of people you know, ask about, but it's something that's really important. So I have mine set to 3 already, um, and I'm just going to show you what that looks like in a minute. So instead of typing on the command bar and having to manually click on it every time, you can just type in line. And then you're going to see that the line command is going to show up, and we'll automatically have lines set on our drawing. We can also do this for polyline, circles, arcs, modifying, uh, anything really. So if I want to scale something, I type in scale, I press enter, I can select my object, I can press enter, and then my command is already there and I can already scale the object. So just keep that in mind and just know that the, the command bar is one of the most important tools you will use in AutoCAD. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to edit objects. So once you have the command bar set up, um, you're going to be in a way better position. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to copy, mirror, scale, stretch just really quickly. So if you come up here, you're going to see we have our command. So we have the scale command, stretch command. If I come here, I'm going to click mirror. I'm going to select the object I want to mirror. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to specify the first part of my mirror line. I'm going to sp specify the second part of my mirror line. I'm going to press enter. I do not want to erase my source object. You can if you want. So if you select erase source object, it will mirror the object but get rid of the original. Helpful in some situations, but if you just want to mirror it and make like the house, if it's, you know, mirrored down the middle, then just click no. So I'm going to click no, and there we have it. We have a mirrored object. Now you can specify the distance and everything, but that's a different uh, function for a different time. 
if you come here, you also have the scale command. So if I click the scale command and I select my object and press enter, I can specify the base point of my scale and it will allow me to scale up my object by multiples of whatever I type in. So if I type in four, it'll be, I think, four times as large or something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, you can also just drag it as well. If you come here, we also have the stretch command up in the top left hand corner. This allows you to stretch an object. So if I click my line, I press enter and I stretch it. Well, it's going to just stretch my line. Um, but, uh, you know, stretch command has a variety of uses, but um, it's more so used when you're, you have like rectangles or something like that. If we come down here, you're going to have a variety of other tools, but we're not going to get into that right now. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to trim. So if I type in trim, it will allow me to trim objects off of another object. So you can see here, um, one of the new features of some of the newer AutoCADs is instead of trimming the entire object of a polyline like was previous in like AutoCAD 2019 and prior, um, is it would trim the entire rectangle I have here. But instead, right now, it will only trim the one side. So this is something that's very useful. Trimming is good if you have like a door that you want to put in. Um, so I just trimmed the left hand side here. If you want a precise trim, you can come over and you can just like create a little like uh, line here and then you can drop drop it down and if I type trim I know that's not very nice but it, that line will stop it from trimming so I can also even trim the line itself so that's just something to keep in mind if you want to edit a variety of objects at once you can either manually select them all so you can either come click down and go right and you can select them all or if you click down left and you pull up, it will automatically select the objects that it comes into contact with for editing. So I don't have to select them all perfectly. Um, another way you can do this is if you just drag, you will get the lasso command. So this allows you to select everything within that, and then it'll select all that. If you want to just move and rotate objects, one of the best ways you can do this is instead of going to the Modify tab and selecting Move, if you remember the command I told you before, the DIN mode, um, then you can just type in Move press enter, select the objects you want to move. So you can select multiple at once. So I'm going to select three here. I'm going to press enter again. I'm going to specify the base that I want to move it from. And then I can select it from there and just move it from that base and it moves all my objects. If you want to rotate an object or two, I'm just going to select um, these two here. I can select them, type in rotate, press enter. I can specify the base point. I'll just do that in the center of one of these. And then you can see that I can rotate it. Once I've got it rotated where I need to, I can press down and then it's going to be rotated fully for me. Once that's done, you can then come over here and we're going to learn how to navigate our drawing. So over here we have the pan tool. So you can grab that and it'll allow you to pan. Another way you can do this is you can just hold your middle mouse button and you can just drag with your middle mouse. So just hold it and drag and the pan tool will, the pan command will automatically be activated. And this is way easier than just coming here and using that. Um, you're going to see over here we have a cube. So what this cube does is it allows you to change the view of your drawing. So up here you're going to have two little arrows. These arrows will will swap your direction by 90 degrees. So right now we're upside down relative to what I was doing before. Then I'm on the right. I was also on the left before. You're going to see here that we have an east, a west, and a north. So what this does is it allows you to get 3D views for 3D objects. If you just click on the cube, you can select the view you want. So right now we're in the top left-hand corner. Um, you know, I can click the front. I can click the. I can click the right. I can click the corners. And this is very useful when you're doing 3D drawings, which we're about to get into in a moment. Once you are set into this view, you're almost ready to start 3D drawing. So the first thing you're going to notice is there's going to be no 3D tools bar up here yet. I do have mine, but you won't. So just come up here, right click on the bar up here, and you're going to see show tabs, and you're going to see the 3D tools one. So just select that. It should have a check mark beside it. Once that's done, you can just come here, go to 3D tools. Another way you can do this is you can come up here and switch from drafting and annotation to 3D basics or 3D modeling. I recommend you go to 3D modeling as it has much more tools for you to use in 3D. So once that's done, you're going to have a variety of tools here and we're going to show you how to use them. So the first thing we're going to do is come here and right under box, we have a variety of solids we can make. So we can make boxes, cylinders, cones, spheres, pyramids, wedges, torus, polysolids. What we're going to do is we're just going to click on the box. Once you click on the box, you should be able to draw a box. So what you do is you just draw, you know, your X and your Y so you get the size of it. So I'm going to do a square at 10 by 10. And then you're going to be able to extrude it. So we're going to, you can extrude it in the negative or you can extrude it in the positive. Make sure you're extruding in the positive. I'm going to make it 10. So it's going to be a cube. 
You can do this for a variety of things. So you can do that, you can do a cylinder. So the cylinder, it works just like the 2D circle command for the first part, so we'll make it 3.3, and then for the extrude, the same thing applies. So just type in 2.5 and you'll have a cylinder. And you can go through and you can play with these and figure it all out yourself. So if you want to turn your wireframe 3D objects into a more realistic approach, you can come up here, you can click 2D wireframe and select what you'd like. You can click realistic, you can click anything here you really want. I recommend realistic. Um, you can do sketchy, make it look more like a sketch, and other types. I'm going to leave it as a 2D wireframe for now. The next thing we're going to talk about is meshes. So you're going to come here and you're going to see there is a thing called convert to mesh. So I'm actually going to switch that to realistic. And then I'm going to select my object and I'm going to click convert to mesh. And you're going to see that my my cube has now turned into a mesh. So you're going to see you can go in, you can edit, you know, the different types of um, panels on the mesh on it. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's uh, that's for another video. But if you come here and you want to make it a little smoother and you select it, you can click Refine Mesh and it should make it a little smoother. This applies to anything that is a 3D object. Um, another thing you can do is you can you can use the Move Gizmo, the Rotate Gizmo, the Scale Gizmo um, to just you know move move your 3D meshes around and stuff. Um, and you're also going to be able to you know adjust any 3D object as you see fit. As you can tell up here, you can also you also have uh, 3D fill commands, 3D offset commands, blend, trim, and other types of tools. One thing I will mention is when you're editing 3D, 3D objects, I do have a video on that. So I'm just going to leave a link and a timestamp for that right up in the top right corner. So you can go check that out for extruding and subtracting. But back to the topic of meshes, if you come back to the modeling section, you're going to notice that you can insert meshes into your drawing automatically. So if we just click on mesh box, we can specify where we want to put our mesh box. We can bring it up and then we're going to have a mesh box and you can go and you can click that and you're going to see that you have multiple different meshes on there that you can then customize to what you need it to be. Once your work is complete you are now ready to export so what you can do is you can come here if you go in the top right corner click on your A symbol you can click save as and you can save the drawing as a .dwg file you can create a drawing template we're just going to create save it as a .dwg file it's drawing 1.dwg we're going to save and then when you want to export, you can click Output, and you can see this Export button here. You can export it as a DWF or a PDF. A PDF allows you to send it to a printer to print your object, and a DWF allows you to just see the drawing as it is. So once that's done, you can save it. It's been exported, and you're ready to go. So that concludes our short AutoCAD 2025 tutorial. We hope you found this helpful. Please go check out our other videos, and if you need anything else, let us know. We'll see you in the next one.